This is Kuben Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. Bit of a random one today. Well, I just so that the viewers are aware of how these unique interviews work and how much preparation goes into it. You called me last night at like 11 o'clock and went, you want to do something tomorrow? And I went, oh. my first thing, I thought, oh. And then you go, I said, yeah, go on then, 11 o'clock or whatever it is. You've just come in. My head's all over the place because we've got so much going on. I'm sat there and I went, this is before we started rolling. What are we talking about, mate? And you went, just effing roll with it. Like that is the prep that goes into these things. So, it's quite interesting at the moment. My style, I, I don't think it's really going down that well in America, like with the promoters and stuff like that, you know? It's really not. No. They're all saying, you know, he's just, you know, he's always giving interviews and um, saying controversial stuff. And I just thought that's really what you got to do. Aaron gave me a little couple of digs. Yeah, um, remind everyone what Aaron said about... Just said that, uh, you know, I can't even remember now, loads of stuff. Like, he said that we're selling tickets out. Of the, I don't think Bob knows that we have a US office with more staff in it than top rank. And we do actually have a US operation because he thinks we're working out of the UK. Um, loads of other stuff. We'll go into Bob Aaron later. I've got loads for him to, you know. But I thought me and Bob were friends, to be honest with you. I was a bit disappointed. But um, I think maybe I have to adjust it a little bit in the US and just, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? Like, because I can be me, which isn't everyone's cup of tea. But I don't want to not be me because what is me? has got us to where we are. Does that make sense? So... Can, when, I, just, can I just throw in some advice? Because yes. I could, you could give me interviews and I could go, um, no comment, I'm not going to be talking about that subject. What's that all about? The reason that our interviews are so good, the reason that, I say people like me, but you know, I've got people talking about boxes because I'm telling you what's happening, everything that's happening. I tell you a lot of things that I shouldn't tell you, but isn't that the beauty of it? The Rather transparency. Than, yeah, but I think the transparency will get me into trouble. But should I change? Like, I, for me, I would think the fans like that transparency. Rather than, you know, oh, Ed, like, dude, come on, just not talk about that and rub people up the wrong way. I've rubbed people up the wrong way for eight years in the UK, I shouldn't really change that style, should I? I don't know. Just thinking about it at the moment, about the US mindset and how to position what I'm doing in the US. Am I the loudmouth, brash Brit who upsets everyone? Yeah, that's me, isn't it? So, but you know, I never um, think you should try, you, you should always try and be yourself because it's a much happier life to lead. If you're fake, you, the mask will no, slip. It's not just that, but it's not enjoyable because you, you know, oh, hey, but that's what it's like. Hey, man, how are you? Oh, it's amazing to see you. Oh, you look amazing today. Oh, we well, actually, you want to say, who's that? Who are you doing? No, but it's, it's just America. I'm, I'm just talking about America in general. It's like, it's very, the, the thing is in America is people will stab you in the back, but you won't even see it coming because they're so friendly and nice to you. And that's not really for me. I'd rather you just didn't talk to me and I just knew we don't do business. Like, don't get me wrong, if there's a deal to be done, but we don't like each other, let's just be honest about that. But in America, it's, it's really like, hey, Chris, you look amazing. Where really you think, fucking you've put on some weight. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather that. I'd rather someone comes up to me and goes, Eddie, Jesus Christ, Porky, you've put on some timber, rather than, hey, Eddie, you look amazing. Have you been working out? You know? <laughs> that, is, that is what it's like, isn't it? Oh, Eddie, you look right. Like when I've been on the road for like I don't know six weeks. Fucking hell, Ed, you look terrible, mate. You look absolutely. Oh my God, Eddie, you look amazing. Really fresh. You've been to the spa. You got a facial, man. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, do you know what I mean, though? It is like that, isn't it? You know, you know when you were kind of silenced from the people above. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the feedback from that was like everyone's 
do an editing site. You can't talk about <laughs> no, no, no. it. It must have been weird for you because you're so open with stuff, but then you were kind of told to yeah, I, taper look, it down a little bit. I was told, basically, that the, the guys at DAZN and, and John Skip just said, Ed, like, we, we know these people don't like you, so let's try and keep, you know, away from saying anything controversial and let's just, you know, and that was hard for me, but I know that's the right thing to do. Like, I'm not an idiot, but... I just feel that there are people in that situation, like, I know that, I've spoke to Deontay before. I know I could sit down with Deontay and have a really good conversation about the fight, the market, the landscape, the money, but he has been like told so many times that this guy is evil and just don't even believe a word he says. And that's, Frustrating because, you know, I feel as though I can I can explain everything and I could really, I say, give him good advice. I know he's got advisors, but anyway, look. So, yeah, I'm and I'm still. That's my and I haven't been told to do this now, but I'm still gonna refrain from, you know, talking about or you know saying something about Deontay or Al or Shelley that could jeopardise this fight, because I don't want to jeopardise this fight, I want to make the fight. So anything I can do to help do that, and in, in this instance, it's not silence, but just, you know, arm's length to say, it is what it is, you're fighting Brazil, we're fighting Miller, talks will continue, and we'll see what happens. Do you accept that over the years, your, or you being you, has mm been a little bit of a hindrance in certain possibly fires. yeah possibly I, I mean I think Khan look Khan Brook the, the two that stand out three that stand out is Khan Brook yeah Frampton Quigg yeah and Joshua Wilder right so they're the three that I think Eubank no because I chose with Eubank like those three I really want bad with the Eubank thing. But you always said that you wanted to sit Eubank down in a room and... Yeah, but I didn't, I don't want to work with Eubank. Mm. But I, my life is too important to be doing that. So, you know, I had a chance, we, we presented it with old news, with the Golovkin stuff, stuff like that. And it was just us in the end game. No, we pulled the plug on that. So, you know, I, and I, I like Junior, I think he's a good fighter, etc. but that's just not for us. Those three are the three where the relationships have been so bad over the years, like with Khan, I'm really talking three years ago when it was bad, bad, you know. But now the relationship's great, obviously. Um, Frampton Quigg, the relationship was just awful, awful, much worse than the Wilder stuff. I mean, do you regret the check? No, that, that's my job. I'm a promoter. Was the little cringe the check? Total cringe. Oh, I look back on it and go, what a helmet. But that's what I do, mate. You can't, you, you've got to understand. I'm a promoter, I'm a showman. And people go, oh, Eddie only loves the camera. Oh, of course, that's my job. What do you want me to do? Hide under there and go, oh no, I don't want an interview. Oh, I don't want to talk about fighters or fights. That's my job. So you're going to hate me for that, but that's what I have to do. Um, so when I stood in this office, and it does make me laugh, with a 1.5 million check, yeah. and even the best bit is not taking out our account details. So people, <laughs> We're going down at Stratford Bank trying to withdraw money from our account. Really? True story. True story. Um, and oh, it was it was it was horrific. But it everything's built towards making the event, the fight bigger. You've got to understand. There's a, there's another side to what's happening right now. Do you know how many people are talking about Joshua Wilder? And they're talking just as much about the negotiations as they are about the fight right now. Do you know what that's doing? Let's have a, a simple sort of educational lesson. What is that doing, Coogan? Making the fight bigger. Well done, old boy. So that is part and parcel of what we're trying to do. So with the Frampton thing, with the 1.5 million, there was many reasons for me doing that. Number one was, let's show Carl Frampton how much money we can offer him, so make sure you know. Number two is, embarrass people a little bit, have a bit of fun. Number three is get people talking, make the fight even bigger, put the pressure on. So many different things. So when we did that, then it was like, oh, that's not, and everyone started going, 
Oh, Carl, you've got to take this. 1.5 million. Check's there. And it just, it helps speed up the process. We got that fight made, right? The other two, we haven't yet. So, you know, in answer to your question, you can't have it twofold. You can't want to make a monster event without talking points and maybe a little bit of controversy and great promotion without me being that guy. So, but there comes a time where the deal is the deal and, and the fighters are so happy. I'm really irrelevant in the deal. You know, yes, I know that at the moment Al and Shelley are using the excuse of, oh, well, it's Eddie. What the fuck has he got to do with Eddie? What about Eddie? He's just this fat guy from England who talks shit. The fight, that's the important thing. And, you know, I am trying to make an effort to keep things as civil as possible so that we can keep our head straight and do the right jobs for our fighters, nothing else. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what Al thinks of me, what I think of Shelley. It just make matters about Anthony Joshua and the right move for his career and the same for Deontay Wilder. And that is this fight. So, you know, I'm going to be whoop and we go from there. What could you have done differently in the last, say, three or four months if you could kind of take back anything or approach things a different way in order to make this wilder fight, what would you have done differently or anything Not at all? a lot really. I mean, could I have been less vocal? Maybe. But I, it's very difficult when, you know, I was saying to someone the other day, I'm doing 30 interviews, a press conference, a weigh-in, a media day, right? And we're doing sometimes two shows a week but pretty much a show a week. So I don't want to turn my back on being accessible to, say, even the media, but, you know, on Saturday night at Copper Box, I think it was Fight Hype said to me, Eddie, I've got to say, like, normally a promoter would do, like, one interview and leave. It's two o'clock in the morning or wherever it was, and you're still here doing interviews. But... That's, how, that's what I feel has got us to that position that we're in. So I think to turn your back now and start thinking, oh, I'm big time now, look at all these guys come to like film. I'm just gonna nip out. That's not really what a promoter should do. A promoter is the one who should be the last one to leave after the press conference when every interview has been done. You've come to our show and, and I think it's about, also, a lot of the media outlets now are online media outlets and they are self-funded so if you've made the trip and you know these guys they make the trips down from might be like Manchester Birmingham wherever a lot of them are paying their own way to come down if they come down and don't get an interview with me or one of the main event fighters it's not great for them everyone's trying to get on so the least I can do is give someone a leg up and say listen oh, I'm, I'm, I'm naked just want to go home. Do you think really I want to be there at half one, quarter to two in the morning in Stratford in the copper box, you know, doing an interview with even if it's a a page or a site that's got a thousand viewers? Now we do an interview, what did our last one do? Three hundred thousand? Yeah, that's, that's big, right. yeah, that's big, that's big yeah. numbers. Some I do might do five hundred, but it doesn't matter, it's still a person. He's still making the same effort to, to put that time in. So I feel as I should give that back. The problem with that is I'm going to talk too much. I'm going to give too much away. I'm going to get a question asked to me that I bite a little bit on. And I want to put my opinion across and it might upset someone. It's very hard to... I don't want to be... I don't want to be and I know that at the level I'm at now, I do have to have that corporate message and that corporate image, you know, like with the zone and you know that sort of stuff. But I don't want to be that guy who, I want to be a fake. That's what I'm saying. You know, I could have, right, Eddie, I could have a, you know, a PR, my own PR guy, who, I've seen it with other promoters, I right, just let you know, today, this is what you're gonna say, and here's the points. Mention this, and you know, make sure you get your point across about that. Don't talk about that, right? And, uh, I've never had notes. I've never had, I've never once done a press conference where I've written one word down, you know? I never have an interview with you. I, like, we sat down five minutes before, I don't even know what you're gonna ask me. 
but I don't care. You can ask me absolutely anything. But isn't that what has made our stuff so special? Or So I don't want to stop that, is what I'm saying. Unfortunately, doing that amount of interviews, I'm going to get myself in trouble, I'm going to talk too much, and I'm going to upset people. But I think I just need to, you know, probably refine it a little bit and just probably not upset as many people as I do. And there'll be people watching that going, no, don't do that. Keep upsetting people because they like the whole environment. But, you know, I'm not, if it don't work out, it don't work out. It's not, you know, it's not going to change my life. I'd rather be real. And I'd rather, you know, when I'm this guy who's brave, I'm not, that's, I'm not putting that on. Yeah, I'm being a salesman, but that's what I am. We'll go check. I'm a used car salesman. I'm like that guy. So when I'm in America, that's the guy I want to be. People might say, yeah, but Eddie, you know, that's going to really upset people. It's like, mate, I've been doing that for eight years. So you've got to believe in me and believe in what I'm doing and, and the way that I conduct my business and approach. But it is a different country. And maybe people won't like it, mate. I don't know. I heard you label boxing in this country as going through a transitional mm. stage at the moment. Um, if I'm being honest, it, it, it seems like a little bit of a, a, a worrying time here in this country for our boxing here. We've kind of, and I was pointed out to you the other day that all our kind of stars here at the moment, they're kind of, aside from Dylan White, if he fights mm -hmm. July 13th, everyone's kind of peddling over yeah, there. I think, I think that's the case because I think, you know, we've, we've done our interviews. The fighters, the managers, they want to control or they, they want to, you know, they're, they're going to want to negotiate certain prices for their fighters. If financially it can't be done in the UK, it can't be done. So there are a lot of fighters who are asking for a certain amount of money and I don't blame them because that's the market rate worldwide, you know, that we can't do them in the UK. I won't worry, I'll just ride the wave. It's only a little wave because the money that's going around in America, that's not going to last because there's going to come a point, just this is like three years ago with the PBC, same thing happened. They come in, money was injected, purses are up here. And after a while, everyone was like, okay, let's just relax. And that's what will happen again. So you just got to ride the wave, but you've got to build the guys coming through. How do you think people like Bellew and DeGale and Groves and Hay and Khan and Brooke got to those flagship pay-per-view fights? They got built on the way through. They had the British title fights, European title fights, and we're only in the same period. But can, can, you, can you see like, Four or five fighters kind of emulating what they've kind of their profile. Yeah, even, of course. Because yeah. when when they were at their level, when De Gale, when when uh, Bellew, when Brooke were at British title level, you weren't going. Well, this guy's going to be a map, big paper. This guy's going to have three or four fights on pay per view. He's going to sell out the O2. He's going to fight at Wembley. No, but that's a transitional period where time will tell whether these guys. Josh Boatze, Josh Kelly, Joe Caldina, Anthony Fowler. I mean, all of these guys, some will make it, some won't. But these are the guys now we've got to invest our time in. And while people are out there going, oh, some of the bigger names are going to America, oh, British boxing, blah, blah, blah. We're out there going, no, 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 keep your head, build these guys. It's only going to be six to 12 months for some of these guys. And are they the guys that in three years' time, we're going to turn around and go, well, like, you know, Boatze, Kelly, you know, Fowler, Akoli, Caldino, whoever it is, they are they are the guys that replaced them. Not and not just guys from our stable, might be Joyce, might be Dubois, or might be Yard. You know, these are the fighters coming through that over time they're gonna be of the same level as the others. So, you know, British boxing's had an amazing few years. You're still gonna have a, a great year, but I do think you're gonna have six to 12 months of riding the wave, and it's gonna be difficult for promoters, UK promoters who don't have American shows or American pot to keep fighters. And we're getting fighters now who are coming to us and saying, right, um, 
my deal's up or you know, we might be on a fight by fight, I've been offered this in America. What do you, you know, can you, what do you think? I said, well, you can take it, mate. Like, we can't match that in the UK and now US, we're full up. Every fighter's looking for that opportunity. You know how, it's not just boxing, it's just life. Every fighter right now is going, how much can I get in America? You know, unless the, of the development stage. So every fighter that's looking at their career and saying, okay, I'm in the last 12, 24 months. What's out there for me in America? I'd do the same, wouldn't you? If you're a fighter and you're thinking, like, yeah, from a fighter point of view, absolutely. But, that's, but they're the yeah, bosses, Coop. But you can't, I can't say to a fighter, no, you're going to earn much less money and you're going to box in England. Because Coogan said, it's a worrying time for brief boxing. Life don't work like that. Business doesn't work like that. So you can't, you know, if there's a fighter out there and his market rate is a million dollars, I go through this all the time, and I can pay him, so that's 700 grand, and I can pay him 200 grand to fight in the UK but he can get 700 grand to fight in America. What do you think he's going to do? What do you think he's gonna to want to do? It's not rocket science, it's not, ooh, a big conspiracy about British and US boxing. It's just a, a transitional period, or just a period in general, where this will happen, and then people will stop spending money in America, and then fighters will come back to the UK, and then these other fighters, Someone will come through that's a superstar, he'll start filling an arena, then he'll become a pay-per-view fighter, then you make a big domestic, and it's, it's just boxing. You know, six to 12 months doesn't determine the sport. History and legacy and longevity determines the sport. So we're looking at this period now. Look at the last three years, and then talk to me again in three years' time when we know what's happening, because that's how we're gonna be judged, not, oh, he's going to America to fight in June. So what? You're gonna watch it, let him earn his money, come back, you know, but it, when there is a period like this, fighters are gonna to wanna to capitalize. Trainers, managers, advisors, they're gonna to wanna to cop, they're gonna to want to capitalize on the market swing and make their money. How many pay-per-view shows in the UK did you do in 218? Five, was it? So it was White, Parker, Joshua, Parker, Joshua Povetkin, Hay Bellew, White Chisora, did I put that in? The White Chisora, White Parker, two oh, and, and Usyk, Bellew, two, five. Six. Five, was it six? Two from Dylan White. Dylan White, Two yeah. from Joshua, yeah, and, two and two from, from Bellew. Yeah. Six. Six. Okay. six. So, and the answer is, your next question, four. Well, I was going to say... Yeah, so we'll, we'll go June 1. If we do a big fight for Dillian no, in July... In the, I was talking about the specific UK pay-per-view. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking about UK. Yeah, so your first one will be in July. June. Joshua. UK pay-per-views. Oh, right. UK, UK show, yeah. First one will be July. And then we'll probably do two on the back end. So we'll probably do four pay-per-views this year instead of six. Judging by the responses of pay-per-view, I would have thought that kept people happy. No, no, <laughs> I know. You, people are now like, where's the pay-per-views? It's like, what? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. but you know when there's a pay-per-view, it Yeah, well, we, want, we were going to do a pay-per-view on April 20 mm. with Dillian. That was our plan, and that didn't happen. Um, so we missed that one. Now we're going June 1, July, probably September, December. Is it one. ideal doing back-to-back -back months of pay-per-view? Not really, no. No, no. No, you'd always want a bigger gap as possible. But then you've got, I mean, it's a bit of a log jam for pay-per-view, isn't it? Because I expect, don't know, but I expect Warrington, Galahad and Fury to be a pay-per-view. Frank Warren's already said that Galahad, Warrington definitely won't be a pay-per-view. Oh, well, then it's not pay-per-view. Well, that's what he said. Yeah, I know, I've but I, twice, I, I mean, I don't know said. how, you know. Maybe Fury. Or maybe that's a pay-per-view and then they lead into it. I don't, I don't know, but, you know. So, and then that's June 15. So you could have a period of three pay-per-view. Oh, you had the Eubank de Gale pay-per-view as well. Um, I just think, again, that's, that's not really about the U US. That's just about the pay-per-view fighters have retired. Well, it has got to do with the US. Not really, no. No, because if Joshua was fighting over no, here it's still, in April, yeah, then that would have been one of the pay-per-views. No, but it's still, it is a pay I don't look at it like that. It is a pay-per-view. I'm looking at my how many pay-per-views. I'm saying more that if Bellew, Hay, 
Groves, De Gaulle was still around, there'd be more pay per views. Well, if you know? managed to make Carlin Brook. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's more the older generation of established pay per view fighters are just retiring. Mm. And there aren't the new pay per view fighters ready yeah, yeah, yet. I agree with that. Yeah, because yeah, if there was, I'd be doing a pay per view. You know, <coughs> Amir Khan. I know Amir Khan. <laughs> Before the fight was announced with Terence Crawford mm -hmm. and the negotiations were going on. You made it very clear that you weren't going to be happy if he took the Crawford fight. He has taken the mm -hmm. Crawford fight. Now, have you kind of just said, just crack on, mm -hmm. but I'm going to kind of take a little step back because no, no, it wasn't no. any of the press conferences. You're not going to be on the fight night because you've got your own show. Yeah, so, no, I wasn't at the press conferences because I wasn't around actually. And I didn't throw me toys out of anger. I'm not going to the press conference, that's disgusting. So it's more that, I also felt that I have a, a loyalty to Kel Brook as well, where I really wanted to make that fight. I couldn't have done any more, really. And I didn't want to also be rubbing it in to Kel. You know, I'm up there, yeah, this fight's the Because I, again, I don't want to be a phony, I don't want to be a fake. So I don't want to be up there going, this is a great fight, this is the one the public wanted to see. Because it's not. The public wanted to see Brooke against Khan. So... The UK hearts, public did, yeah. Well, listen, more people worldwide wanted to see Brooke Khan. It, trust me, people are talking about Brooke Khan in America. They ask me about it all the time. So, I, you know, that's what I wanted to see. And I don't really want to be sitting up there at a top-ranked press conference disrespectful game. Well, I'm a bit gutted this fight's happening, to be honest with you, because everybody wants to see Brook Khan. It's not really fair. They've paid an absolute fortune for Amir Khan. And you'd have to be telling everyone to watch it on BT Sport as well. Yeah, but that's, this was before that was done. See, the situation with that is, is we had a deal with Top Rank to put it on Sky if they wanted it, and if not, we'd take it to the general marketplace. Sky turned it down, and it went to, or actually, well, Sky was going to do it with a double header, then it was offered effectively as a standalone pay per view. When you say double header, do you mean when Dylan we were going to do, yeah, yeah, we were gonna do April 20th? How much would that have worked out then? Can you give us an indication? What? For a double header? For, say, two, how much what? If Dylan White was yeah. headlining the O2 mm -hmm. and you were running into Khan Crawford, mm -hmm. what, how much would that have been as a pay per view? Cost? Cost? Yeah. 1995. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But, then it was like, this is what we need. It needs. It might, they wanted it to be a standalone pay per view. They weren't interested in just a rights fee. So then it was a standalone. It was like four o'clock in the morning, no chance. So we said no, and as Sky turned it down, they took. They were able to take it elsewhere. So, but it's not. You know, I don't. Again, it's on BT Sport. I'm not. I oh, don't mention. Don't mention. But again. The PR guy, don't mention BT Sport, don't mention it. It's not a problem. You know, um, but with Khan, I spoke to him last night. I mean, it's not, we're actually, I'm talking to his team away from, you know, his focus is on that fight. But there are a lot of other fights out there for him, on pay-per-view, in the UK, depending on what happens April 20. I mean, look, the Kell Brook fight, he's still a fight that we want to make, but a lot depends on April 20, so let's get that out of the way. And I hope he does the business. He's in great shape. It's a very, very, very tough fight. But we will see. Kel Brook, you said, very highly likely will feature on June the first mm -hmm. card. Any more developments about who he could be fighting? No, not fighting yet. Um, he almost certainly will be fighting on that. I mean, we've got sort of Callum Smith, who's supposed to be fighting on the Usyk card. He wants to fight on June one as well. You know, instead, sorry as a lot of people do. So we've got Katie Taylor also looking at the Undisputed fight, possibly Boatsy, Josh Kelly. So everybody wants to go on that card, basically. Tommy Cole. Tommy Coyle. But he's on it, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, everybody wants to go on that card. I mean, Tommy's supposed to be fighting Algeri, which we're just tying up at the moment. Um, but, yeah, like I said, everyone. What to Burns and Beltran? Burns has got another fight that's been negotiated at the moment. In the US? No, in the UK. Okay. Any more on that or not really? No. Thought you weren't said anything, Geezer. No, it's no comment. It's no comment from me. Akoli. Yeah. Just going back to the weekend. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, stocks. What did Camacho in three rounds? Four rounds. Four yeah. rounds. Sorry, um, Lebedev. I think they want it. I mean, Nicoli. I mean, the deal's not done with Lebedev. Obviously, you've got the whole WBA cruiserweight situation, which is Usyk. Lebedev's the champion in recess. He was champion. He was injured. So Usyk fought for the title. Lebedev's in recess. If Usyk vacates and moves to heavyweight, why isn't he vacating it? Um, it's it's in the process. So. All of them, obviously. Yeah. It's just the case of, do you take one fight heavyweight and then evaluate things? Because say he goes up to heavyweight and say he scrapes past Takam, who's a big lump, and turns around and goes, do you know what? I'm not sure about his heavyweight. Then he goes back as undisputed champion. Sensible. Yeah. So it's just whether you do that, or whether you go, no, I'm done with cruiserweight. If he vacates that belt, Lebedev becomes champion again because he never lost, he was in recess. And he would have a voluntary defence against a Kohli, which is what we've made an offer to World of Boxing and Lebedev for. To take place here? Uh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, I was looking at June 1, I think it's going to be too early for Lebedev. What about I was July like, 13th? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, July um, is the right time for that fight. I mean, that that's a... I know, I know, you know, some people give a Cody stick, but that's a for me a great Saturday night fight night headliner. I'm sure you agree. Lebedev against a Cody for the World Cruiserweight title, and it's exciting because it's well. So before. you might put that on its own. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So when I said July 13th. Yeah, we could add it to a pay per view. I mean, adding a Cody to Dillian White's pay per view would be an interesting dynamic. Do it. But. Um, <laughs> That, that's the kind of fight that would be a brilliant Saturday night headline fight. For where? London. Yeah, like, you're not oh too optimistic yeah. with that? Uh, yeah, bottom bar, O2. It was a proper fight. Again, if you want to give me a stick about Saturday night fight nights, I mean, a Coley against Lebedev for the World Cruiserweight title. You know, I know he gets some stick, but I promise you, as, as a Coley moves up the levels of opposition and people aren't afraid to engage with him. It's going to be very exciting. It's just at the moment he hits so hard that people are wanting to hold on to him. Like on Saturday, Waddy, and I don't blame Waddy's tactics, but I think when Waddy felt the power, it was like, okay, when I get close, lock him up. But that's what Coley has been doing. And he's now trying not to do it. But against the better fighters, the more seasoned fighters, they won't want to hold a Coley. They'll want to fight him on the inside and it will be very exciting. And he's, he's vulnerable. He's raw. He's not ready. But isn't that what you want to see? Don't you want to see people take chances? And if he won the World Cruiserweight title in his 13th fight, he would have won the Commonwealth twice, British title, WBA International, and the World title in 13 Cruiserweight fights. It's pretty impressive. It is. You've got to give him respect. And he's willing to do it. Like he's now come out to me, and the team have come out and said, we will fight Lebedev next. I think that deserves credit. Just Joshua manage him. Yes. Okay, how much involvement does he have with Quite a lot. Joshua in terms of who he's fighting, etc.? Yeah, I mean, jo I've been speaking to AJ about this fight for a, a long time. It's a bit like the Charles Martin fight when AJ took it. And I know people look and say, oh, Charles Martin. But at the time, yeah, at he was time, like 31 no wins, no one was saying 30 that at the time. KOs. Just an unknown. It wasn't really an unknown. He was a, well, in terms no, but of in, but in, in America, he was a very... He was a, 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 a heavyweight that in the circles people thought, this guy can fight, he's dangerous. He's got 30 knockouts, 29 knockouts and 30 wins, I think. And at the time it was like, oh, blimey. Josh has just boxed Dillian White. He got rocked in the fight, he didn't look that great, bit ragged, lost his cool. So are you gonna go now into a world title fight or are you gonna defend the British? That was the decision that we were, and Josh thought about it for ages and actually, um, you know, the training team, Tony Sims, Rob McCracken, it was like, I don't know, but AJ was the one who went, yes, I'm taking it. And actually in the same instance here with Akoli, I think AJ and the trainers, actually the trainers up for it, but I think AJ's like, well, it's a bit early, what do you think? And Lawrence is like, I want it, I want it, I know I can beat him. And in that instance, generally the fighter will always overrule the team, you know? You must give him all the, um, you know, all the info you can, the, pro the pros and the cons. But ultimately, when the fighter says, 
I want it. I can beat him. I want to take his chance. And that's what Josh did against a uh, Martin. He was the one. The team said, we think you can beat him, but he's a bit too early. And it's not just about that fight, it's what comes after it. Do you understand? So you've got to defend your world title. So when Josh beat Charles Martin, it only went a round and a half, he was still a complete novice. He boxed Dominic Brazil next in his 17th fight. Wilder's now fighting him in his 42nd fight. So Josh had to fight Brazil as a complete novice. He won every round, knocked him out in six rounds. Then he boxed Molina. Seven. Seven. Then he boxed Molina, went two rounds or whatever it was, or three rounds. It was a nothing fight, to be honest, in terms of learning. So he's still, he's learned a little bit, but he's still a bit of a novice. Then he gets Klitschko straight after. Again, as a, uh, as a novice. So the same thing's going to happen to Akoli. If he beats Lebedev, there's no turning back. You don't go, oh, you know, I'm going to defend but me. To be Brick. fair, he's done the domestic scene now, hasn't Who? he? Who? Akoli. Yeah, I'd still like still like him to have one more. You say he's done the domestic scene. Who, who actually is there for left for him to fight? Glover, React Paul, I don't know, Billum Smith. I don't know, they're still but good. He's, he's, he's a little I bit agree. ahead of all. I agree, no, I agree. Yeah. But I, I would have no problem with him having another British defence. But the European champion, as well, is a tough fight. It might actually be the same kind of level of toughness of Lebedev. A Coley react for. It's a good fight. Absolutely. I think in time that'll be a big fight. Mm. Might even be, could even end up being a world title defence for Lawrence Akoli. That would be interesting. Yeah, if Lawrence wins the world title, I would love him to defend at some point against a Brit. But who are the Brit cruiserweights mm. that are going to get to that level? Can you just give us an update on these fights? Uh, why didn't the Jose Burton and Craig Witches fight happen? Um, a mixture of money. On whose side? Uh, probably more Craig Richards' side, to be honest. I mean, they both wanted paying well for that fight, but Craig particularly. But it was more about, I don't think what Craig was asking for was overly unreasonable. It was more about April 20 and what we had on that card already. And it was between Cordina Townend and Richard Burton for that last slot on that card. And Richard Burton? Richard's Burton. Oh, sorry. Yeah, great banter. And <laughs> Cordina Townend was done, ready to go, and that went on. And then we'll do, I think Burton, uh, Richard's can still happen, but perhaps in June. June or? The June. A bit, you know, whether that's a, that's kind of like a good next gen headliner. I think. No, Bill and Smith Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. What's Isaac didn't want it. Okay. I mean, I, I read Isaac's comments. I, I don't know if he's running his own uh, Twitter account. Apparently he's not. Because some of the things that he tweets are really strange, to be honest with you. But, um, We offered Isaac Chamberlain the Billum Smith fight, which I thought was a, a really good fight. But he tweeted saying, I can't hear actually, because I, I, I read it, I remember screenshotting it thinking, what is all that about? Already discussed this with at clone cyclone. It's about as silly a fight as anyone could think of right now for both of us. We will do much better business in two to three years time when he's built his fan base and I've consolidated mine. It just baffled me, really. I mean, it's, it's a British cruiserweight eliminator. It's nothing to build. Like, Isaac lost to uh, Lawrence. Lawrence went and won a British title. Isaac come back with a good win against um, Luke Watkins. He should be fighting people like Chris Billum smith in my opinion. So that didn't happen? No, so we'll probably do React Poor against Billum Smith. On? Um, could be on that June card when we talked about Richards. Where, where are you looking to put that? I don't know. In London? London, yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> just run me through your potential. We know the dates you've obviously already got. Okay, what? so this is how it looks at the moment. Mm. So March 30th, this weekend, is Smith Eggington, Fowler Fitzgerald, David Price against Cash Alley, Robbie Davis Jr. against Joe Hughes, 
Farrell against Bowes, Craig Glover, Tom Hart debut, Paul Butler, Natasha Jonas, Jed Carroll. That's the whole bill. Um, April the 12th is Lomachenko Crawler in America. April the 20th is Conor Ben, Caldina, Town M for the British title, Josh Kelly, Chisora, Dave Allen, Lucas Brown, pro debut of Charles Frankham, Shannon Courtney, etc. April 26 is LA, Rung Versailles against Estrada, the Henny Roman unification, Jesse Vargas against Humberto Sota, Scott Quigg, Giasoff, Anti Sims Jr., professional debut of uh, Austin Williams as well on that card, 26. Also showing Florence that night with Matrim Italy. May the 4th, Jacobs Canella, also a Brit in the chief support there, which we'll announce very, very soon. Um, May the... People know what that is anyway, can't you just... What, the rider, Olivia? Yeah, is it? It's very nearly done okay. to be announced. Great opportunity for John. Oh, it's an unbelievable, great fight, hmm. great fight. Someone's... Um, that's May 4th, then... May 10 is a next gen in Nottingham, at Nottingham Arena, which will be Lee Wood, Jordan Gill, um, Felix Cash, Commonwealth title, Fabio Wardley, Ray Ford, what? our American. Bringing Ray um, over? Yeah. Um, Savage. And the debut of... Um, Dalton? Also Dalton Smith, yeah. I was going to say Charlie Franken, but Franken's yeah. going April 20. That's May 10. Then you've got May, we're just sorting out the Usyk. Is May Reverend 10 a Friday or a Saturday? Friday. Friday night. Yeah, May, te May 17, possibly Usyk. We're just sorting out what date that's going to go on. Life is to be on the Friday? Friday, yeah. I, I think it was going to go on the Saturday. We just could go the week after, but we're just finalising that today. What? May 25. Really? Maybe. Maybe. We're just sorting out the scheduling now. So, um, and then you've got June 1, Joshua Miller. Um, then you've got June 8 or 15 will be Golovkin. And then after that, planning. There'll be a UK show end of June. And then July, looks like 13, um, will be Dillian White, etc. Can you tell us any more about kind of the feedback and the vibe you got from the other day from Mauricio Suleiman regarding the... No, again, that, that is a subject where I shouldn't t talk too much on because I don't want to talk about what was said in the meeting because it was confidential, but we had a good meeting and we put our points across. That's been delivered now in writing and they'll go through the procedure and make a decision with the governors. But as far as you know, July 13th, Dylan yeah. White is definitely fighting. Mm -hmm. That's what we've agreed. Who are you talking to at the moment then? Um, various people. I mean, there was the Char fight, but obviously that's WBA world title, which if, we, if he's WBC mandatory, we have to look at that position. Um, Pavetkin, Ortiz, um, anyone else in the WBC highly ranked, Kiyabal. But for it to be pay-per-view, it's got to be a... Yeah, and it would have to be a big card as well. That's what we're talking about, other big fights potentially on that card whether Chisora Parker goes on there, Kohli, uh, Lebedev, I mean, you know, but Dillian's in a great position because if he gets made mandatory for the WBC, he's in a great position. When will you know that? Two weeks. Are you currently awaiting any purse bids involving your fighters or not? I don't think you are, no. are you? Card this week. Mm -hmm. Really good card. I think this is probably the best card I've done. I mean, I know it's not, I know that Smith Eggington's a great fight. It's not Brooke Kahn, but when you look at the card from top to bottom, you know, I mean, not just including Glover, Butler, Tom Hart's debut, Natasha Jones, but I'm talking about from the TV slots, the Facebook Live, this is really what. I think the Facebook live fight should always be one really good championship fight where possible. And we've got Philip Bowes against Tom Farrell, Commonwealth, like welterweight title. That's the Facebook fight. 
Then seven o'clock, we go live on Sky Sports. We're going to go with Robbie Davis Jr. against um, Joe, Hughes. Joe Hughes, British and European like world weight title. Again, another great fight. Then we're going with David Price against Cash Alley, which is like someone is getting violently knocked out in that fight. There is no way that fight goes distance. And I think it's a really good fight. Good domestic heavyweight fight. Then we go on to Fowler Fitzgerald, which everybody's talking about. It's such a great fight. Um, two Commonwealth Games gold medalists, two GB teammates. You know, obviously a few back and forths as well. A really good fight between two excellent undefeated prospects. And then Eggington, Liam Smith, which is going to be an absolute bloodbath, to be honest with you. Um, it's just a great card. We're going to have about 8,000 in. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for that card. Genuinely very, very excited about Saturday night. Just going back to the Copper Bobs, um, how many 50-50s would you say was on that card at the Copper Bobs? Um, not many. I mean, I think that... I always knew that Ritson's fight would be a good fight. I think people just presume... Oh, he's fighting this Argentinian guy. So I wouldn't say that was a 50-50, but I think it was a lot closer to 50. I mean, I didn't win him by two rounds, maybe three rounds. That was a good fight. Um, on paper, for me, I expected the Marino fight to be a little bit closer than it was. Um, Conroy was the mandatory to fight Boazzi. Was that a 50-50? No. You know. Um, Cody... Match yeah, no, again, Commonwealth champion against British champion. No, I think this card, Saturday, is full of 50-50. I mean, Smith Eggington's not a 50-50. Smith's a favourite in that fight, but Eggington has a, a strong chance. A bit like Fowler Fitzgerald, I think Fowler's the favourite. I think Fitz is trained so well, so hard. And then you've got Price Alley, I think is a 60-40 for Price. Farrell Bowes is a complete 50-50. And Hughes, Robbie Davis Jr., the same. So yeah, I think this fight has a lot more 50-50s. This show in the Copper Box one. Um, <clears throat> just going back to Bob Allen. Mm. Can I read you some quotes? Mm. You love it, don't you? Go on. Eddie is an okay guy. Thank you, Bob. But he's full of himself. That's fair enough. No, I don't mind that, that's fair. Okay. Uh, to really be effective. He's full of himself to really be effective. DAZN has him doing events in the US. Everybody knows, looking at it, knows it's a mash. He's spending money on these ridiculous programs on DAZN that nobody cares about. Mm. Also made some comments of saying you're isolating Anthony Joshua on DAZN. Yeah, that's a, that's a top ranked move. I mean, actually, his new comments are, Joshua should sign with top rank. I and mean, this is what this is all about for Bob. Position Hearn as, uh, Hearn, you know, what do you want to be with Hearn for? This is what other people have been doing as well. I see that as a really big compliment. And, you know, I sent those quotes onto my dad, just because that's what I do, do you know what I mean? If I get in a situation where it's like, fucking hell, my dad's like, he's the words of wisdom, you know? So I sent them to my old man and he comes back, probably won't, so I shouldn't say what everything he said. <laughs> no, tell us. But he goes, <laughs> so I'll just say it, it'd be hilarious. So I, sent, I just sent him the link to that article yeah. and he goes, Old man just trying to be relevant. Bless him, he's older than me. That is what he said. So then he said, reading between the lines, I think Aram is under huge pressure from ESPN. I think mainly because the UFC are driving so many numbers. And if you look at Bob's shows, I mean, last week they did Pulev against Dinu, a Romanian against a Bulgarian on US TV. I don't think anyone watched. And then what about when they had Jennings against Rivas? And they've got some really weird shows. And then they do, and then they spend all that money on Fury Schwartz. So I'm guessing ESPN aren't particularly happy with him. 
Um, this is my old man again. He's so out of touch, it's not true. He thinks we sell our tickets from the UK. Because that was the other quote in there. If you read that one, have you got it or not? It basically says, he's selling all his tickets out of the UK, thinks that we don't have a US office. Does he know that we have an operation in New York, a much bigger operation than his at top rank? No wonder he speaks so well of me, because he said he could learn from his dad. He was a great promoter. He said, no wonder he speaks so well of me. I never ch challenged him in his own backyard, and he does not like it. So that was nice. It's like, it nice when you get it from your old man. I thought, yeah, that's right, Bazza. Fuck you, Aaron. But I actually sent the link on to Carl Marie. I get on really well with the top rank guys. I do. So I think this is more about an ESPN play for AJ or, you know, something like that. But next week we've got a press conference with Lomachenko Crawler. So I'll, I'll be with Bob. We can have a little jazz stuff. I've, I've, I've a lot of respect for Bob Aaron. The guy's 87 years old. Unbelievable the way he yeah. carries on. And like but I do feel like he's out 21. of touch with a lot of things. But I can't disrespect him because when you sit down with a man and he's telling you how he promoted the thriller in Manila, what am I going to talk sit about? Price fire at your call. <laughs> um, Andrew Selby mm. stopped. Yeah. I haven't seen the fight. I saw the stoppage. I understand he was winning the fight. Um, I'm a bit gutted for him, really. Um, Would that fight have happened? What? Who's mandatory? Yeah, I mean, you could have moved him up, Edward. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's a good fight, fight yeah. but I think they're talking about it was at like 4,000, 5,000 feet above sea level. And it was just a brutal, um, you know, brutal weight cut. I don't know, but apparently it was, uh, you know, he lost the purse bid and he got sent out to Mexico. It's a reason he got sent out to Mexico for that to happen. So. Maybe a fight fight, maybe? With it. With Cal. Oh, with Cal Charlie. And Charlie, yeah. Yeah, I'd like Charlie to unify first, to be honest. I'd like him to fight Maruti. Um, he still has a rematch clause, which we're supposed to fight next against the guy he beat the first time around. So we have to deal with that as well. Um, and now we've got the Mexican mandatory. This is all part of the game, all part of our job to make sure we manoeuvre in right positions. This is sometimes the toughest part of what we do because now everything comes on top, right, you've got to fight him and he wants a mandatory, he wants a unification and, you know, but that's the game. Thoughts on anything else happening in boxing outside of your world or don't you really pay attention? My world is boxing. What are you talking about? Outside of well, You're the one that always claims on a Monday morning, oh no, I never watched that. You know, last thing I want to do is watch boxing after. No, I just say to you, on Saturday night, when I don't have a show, which is never now anyway, this conversation's irrelevant, I, I'm not really allowed by my missus and kids to be sitting at home watching boxing. That's all I'm saying. Of course I catch up on things and I read things religiously. I study the sport every day. But what do, what you, talk, you want me to comment on other thing, things other people are doing? Is that what you're trying to get me no. to do? Somebody, I read a tweet the other day that made me laugh. Someone said that you have shares in BoxRec. That is true, actually. What? Yeah, I have about 16% ownership of Box Rick. Are you joking? Yes. Oh. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. Of course oh. I don't. Oh, what? But I do, I do spend a great amount of my time on Box Rick, night and day, studying. Howard. <laughs> that was great. Howard, Howard broke the internet. That was great to see Howard. Should we do another one? Who's Who could we find? In Liverpool. In Liverpool. Mm, I was going to say something, but they're Scottish. I don't know where I got that from. I'll have a think about it. And I'll, at, the, at the presser, we'll call out a scouser. Famous scouser who we haven't seen for a long time. Any suggestions, welcome. Yeah. But to be honest, I think it needs to come off organically, Ed Edward. Organically? Yes, okay. it needs to come naturally, because otherwise that kind of worked the other day. Yeah, okay. Howard saw it, you made Howard's night. It was great. Must be weird I felt though. a bit sorry for Howard, because I was like, Howard, mate, can I have a picture? But imagine if you're known as Howard from Halifax, like how annoying must that be, that you are Howard from Halifax? Hmm. It's a bit like <laughs> me, getting just ferociously booed. You know when I walk down that thing, 
I was trying to explain to someone the other day in America when I was in Philadelphia, one of the fighters actually, I won't name, but they said, uh, do people in England really hate Eddie, didn't they? I was like, no, not really. It's like, what's all with all the booing? And I was trying to explain to them, you're like the pantomime villain. Yeah, but it's like, can I, can we, can I have some cheers? Actually, sadly, weren't too bad. Liverpool, touch wood. Just nah. the shred it. Don't no, say it. The, okay. Don't say it. Generally, we got, I've got a good relationship with people in Liverpool. I love the Scousers. So they're kind, generally tend to be a bit nicer to me, but we'll see. Do you think we'll get one of the big heavyweight fights this year? The yes. super fights? Are you yes. optimistic? Yes. You've kind of run out of things to say now, haven't you? No, I'm just asking. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm optimistic, but I'm always optimistic, aren't I? So, but I, I can't see, you know, when we announce Joshua against Miller, people obviously a few moments, that, that turns out being the best fight in the heavyweight division for the first half of the year. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Right? So, it's our job to make sure we put on the best heavyweight fight for the second half of the year as well. And that is Joshua. Well, I just, you know, I just really hope we make that fight. I don't mind that Brazil Wilder fight. No, okay, it's, that's okay. It's okay. That's I mean, look, fight, he's yeah. a guy that, again, like, I don't know, like Josh had glandular fever in that fight. He won every second and he battered him. But it was also his 17th fight. He was a complete novice, Josh, in that fight. <laughs> so Brazil might knock him out. What? How could just a Joshua win over Brazil then look? AJ might knock, AJ might knock, uh, sorry, Miller might knock AJ. Schwartz might, no. Um, Can I ask you a question about yeah, Schwartz? Yeah, <laughs> Again, this is what someone told me the other day. I've got shares in Tom Schwartz. No. <laughs> Has Tom Schwartz ever been discussed as a potential opponent for Anthony Joshua? Don't be absolutely ridiculous. Are you sure? A hundred percent. Okay. Why? Well, right. okay. when, when are you talking about? Like, what? For his debut? No, just has he ever been? Has he ever no, been? No, I mean, looked at as a potential opponent. Has someone ever, I mean, I might be talking about in his sixth or seventh fight, not taking the piss, genuinely, at that level. Did someone say to me, what about Tom Schwartz? I don't, I don't know. From when he won the world title, even before that, three foot, no. Like maybe when he boxed the likes of, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember now, the Russian. Um, like Jason Gavin, those kind of people. You know when he was like six, seven, eight and nine, did someone ever say to me, what about Tom Schwartz, who is, might have been 10 at the time? Maybe, but never, you know. Okay. No, why do you say that? No, obviously, you've got that looking like smug look that you think you've got some info. No, I don't. I just asked you the question. That was all. No, you've... All right. Go on. Calm down, Eddie. It's cool. You've answered the question. I'm happy with the answer. No, but why are you sitting there with a I'm smug? not. I asked you a question and that was it. Like, you answered it and let's move on. It's like, you just dismissed the speculation. Yeah, Fine. I, I don't know. I mean, She's aura. Again, but they wouldn't... Bob Aram gives me stick. Yeah. Fury Schwartz. Okay, enough said. Go on. Uh, Dave Caldwell told me the other day that they were looking for Chisora to fight Tom Schwartz. Um, Thoughts? It hasn't been discussed with me. Maybe with Haymaker. Yeah, look, yeah, that's Schwartz, what Caldwell yeah, said. So Schwartz, be... Schwartz is like rated with the WBO. So if you're looking for a comeback fight after getting beat, like Derek did, I want like he's fighting Senad Gashi. Top, I, th I believe that Senad Gashi was beating Tom Schwartz until he got disqualified. Is that correct? You're laughing and nodding no, your head. No, I've, 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 I've seen it, I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, so put it this way, Senad Gashi is a better fight than Tom Schwartz. So, but he's not undefeated because he's he lost a DQ to him and then he got beat by Takam on a week's notice. But I just think that, uh, listen, again, I don't blame Tyson Fury. Fury's having the time of his life. He's getting a load of money to fight Tom Schwartz. Top ranks are the ones who'd be saying, what are we doing here? But again, fair play to Tyson. 
But when you've been mandated to fight Deontay Wilder, the rematch of supposedly the fight of the year and this and that, and and you turn it down and walk away from that fight and fight Tom Schwartz, it don't look great. What will happen with the Usyk mandatory for if he if moves Usyk up? moves up and doesn't return to cruiserweight, he will be mandatory for the WBA world title. And he will take that fight in at the back end of the year? Yeah, I mean, unless there's an undisputed fight, unless there's a, you know. You, but you, the worst way is that fight would happen in spring 2020, the Usyk fight. But do you kind of rule out until Joshua's got all the belts that he may have to or may not have to vacate one of the titles? I don't want to vacate because we want the undisputed fight. I mean, don't get me wrong. If a title was vacated, we'd still fight Wilder. But it wouldn't be the undisputed fight. No. That's, the, that's the, the golden chalice, isn't it? So that's why we want it to happen in that What's his potential mandatory? And WBO with Usyk? IBF with Pulev is after the WBO mandatory. So that's next year, though? Yeah. Right. And then there'll be a WBA mandatory, which is not set yet. So at the moment, whenever he fights Usyk... Who's number one in the WBA? Uh, Trevor Bryant, but he, won't, he wouldn't be the manager. Because of the regular title, eventually, probably at some point later this year, they will say, this fight is for the mandatory position. Because he's going to have a logjam of mandatories. So after Miller, he's either going to fight Wilder, or another fight, or more likely, Usyk. If he fights the undisputed fight, then he's got to fight Usyk. Then he's got to fight Pulev. There's another mandatory after that. Then he's got to fight the WBA one. So that's when you get in the realms of, are we vacating a belt here? Klitschko never vacated a belt. He just kept, but he got criticised because a lot of the times the mandatories that were being put in front of him, I think was it Tony Thompson twice or something like that, that he had to fight as a mandatory. Will Joshua's second fight of the year more than likely be in the US? No. No, not. I mean, I think if the Wilder fight happens, I think we have no choice but to take that fight in the US. Because it's the only way that fight's yeah, going to get But if it's not Wilder, say it's a Usyk. No, I'd love him to come back and do it in the UK. What, like That's Car it. Cardiff again? Yeah. Might even go to another country and do a fight. Germany. Another country? Yeah. Germany. China. Um, Saudi Arabia. I don't know. But we're not, we're not limited to UK and America. Nigeria? Yeah. He's always said he wants yeah. to fight there. Yeah. Depends on the fight. Yeah. You know? Like, say we had to fight Pulev at some point. I don't think the UK public would be able to move me that fight. Agree? Hmm. Well, Not when everyone wants well, X, Y, Z. But the Usyk fight, yeah. Yeah, that's a good fight. That's a that. good UK fight. All How have ticket sales gone for June the 1st? S fifth, nearly 16,000. Okay. What so how many left? 19. 19. Be a sellout before fight week, in my opinion. Oh. It's a man fantastic. I mean, you know, people who sell out the MSG at those ticket prices. I mean, this is incredible. Who sets the ticket prices? Well, for that, pretty much MSG. MSG. You know, there's a deal in place with guarantees and stuff like that. So, yeah. What's been your highest crowd in the US shows since the zone? Was it the other night? But Philly. That was the best Philly. atmosphere the other night. Yeah, it was really good. No, but. Um, so we had, what have we done? Chicago, it's about 5,000. Boston. Boston was good, about, about five, five and a half. Kansas. Not great. It was like three, four, that evaporated into about 1,500 when Nico Hernandez boxed. Yeah. Um, Andrade was the garden, that was nearly full up. It's like 3,000. Philly was the next one. No, you had Bivol and Smith, Tony Yeah, Stone. like 3,000. Philly was good, 5,000, something like that. That was, a, that was our best atmosphere. Yeah, so five and a half thousand, something like that. Is it hard? Really to, hard. Yeah. Really hard, yeah. Because you look at the quality of the cards that are being put on. I mean, I expect to do between six and 8,000 for Rung Beside Strada, something like that. It's on a Friday, which hurts us a little bit, but no one's really selling Seven, eight, nine thousand. I mean, were you surprised uh, that Garcia and Spence really did forty thousand? Yeah, more than that, wasn't it? Forty-two thousand. I don't know. I thought it was forty-seven. Was it? That's no, really good. They're, um, but a lot of that is the whole Jerry, Jerry Jones. Is that his name? Jerry Jones. 
Dallas Cowboys getting behind, like, you know, it's a major organisation. So when Le- their biggest crowd in there was Smith Canella. Yeah. Is that 60,000? I think it was in its 50s. Yeah. But that was like, yeah. It's a great venue. Amazing. Um, Will you go to Dallas? In general. Yeah. For a show. We're talking about doing Maurice Hooker down there, Jesse Vargas. I mean, it won't be in the Cowboy Stadium, but Texas is a place we want to promote in. Um, we'll be involved in the Golovkin show as well. Um, be interesting to see how many Lomachenko Crawler does at the Staples Centre. Be interesting to see how many Khan Crawford does at MSG. Mm. Um, it's not. It's not easy. It's not easy because you think some of those shows that we're putting on there, if we put them in the UK, they'd be like eight, nine, ten, twenty thousand. You know, triple world championship headers and. We're very lucky in this country. I mean, you're lucky because if you didn't have the British public behind you, you would be, you know. What? I'm saying if you were in America, yeah. I don't think financially you'd be in the same position. If you, if you aren't, I'm, not, I'm not criticising you, I'm just telling you. No, it's what, hard because boxing about... right, when you think about it in America there are there is baseball basketball American football ice hockey all these sports it's not even, even the soccer ten. it's not even in the top 10 what boxing yeah no I mean it probably is but I don't it's... think it is okay I think I saw an actual an official report official yeah. report um, yeah boxing here number two I mean, in terms of not 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 necessarily viewership numbers, but in terms of social interaction and digital numbers and just people talking, you have to say boxing's up there, don't you? It's up two there. But it's not number two. What was it? number two? Badminton's quite high. Oh, fuck off. Just because we don't like it, don't knock it. No, it's not. What are you talking about? Badminton. Most popular sports in this country. I don't think boxing's even in the top six. But what? What are you talking about? Participation? No, of course not. I'm talking about man on the street talking about sports. So you're not talking about viewership, which is actually... I am talking about viewership. I'm talking about crowd numbers. People, of, right. I'm, talk, I'm talking about social interaction is what I'm talking about. Right. What are people talking about sport-wise on the street right now? But people will talk Answer about that. fucking question. People will talk about it to you because you're a fucking promoter, no, geezer. it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, it's so would. Yeah. <laughs> I got, look, I'll tell you, everyone that talks to me on the street wants to talk about boxing. No shit. Funny that, isn't no, it? but it's true, don't you uh, think? They, go on, tell yeah, me. I get that. No one talks to me about anything else about Tell me boxing, another. But we're, you're in the sport, I'm kind of semi in Tell the sport. me another sport that people are talking about in the same way they're talking about boxing. Aside from football? Yes. Bad to us. Yes, to so us. The question, mate. The sport, Forget man. us. Forget us. I don't know. Well, tell me. Like, All right, so hold on a minute. Golf. I'm sure there's people that ring their mates up and go, oh, did you see that putt from fucking Tiger Woods, mate? <laughs> right. I'm sure they do that. But oh. you get the boxing stuff because your feed is all no, boxing. But I know, and I people know. people come up to you look. and go, oh, Eddie, do the impression, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you've only got to look at the digital numbers. Like, talk to Sky about their website and, you know... The... Sky would be a good people to ask yeah. about that and okay. actually tell you... Okay, ask them. What's popping? Viewership, what's don't get me wrong. Darts outperform, outperforms boxing. But I'm talking about... Social interaction, I'm talking about social views, digital views, all this boxing is well up there. I'm, well just, up. I'm just saying to you, if you was to replace all your boxing follows on Twitter and Instagram, for example, Obviously, hold on a minute. badminton followers. Exactly, you'd be saying, mate, everyone's talking about badminton, the old shuttlecock. Wee. <laughs> you are a <laughs> Who are you under more pressure from? In what respect? Uh, broadcast wise. Not really under any who's pressure. Put, who's the yes, issue up? Not really. I mean, Here you are. yeah, we're under, we're under pressure to produce. But who do you feel kind of more of a need to keep sweet right now? It's not really keeping sweet. It's just. Just putting on good shows, really, and doing the best that I can. I'm not, I'm not out there thinking, oh, I've got to keep the zone sweet, I've got to keep the sky sweet. Just putting on the best shows that I can. Last Saturday was good. This Saturday's a blinder. Next weekend or the weekend after, they've got Lomachenko Crawler, and they've got the O2 show. It's flying at the 
with the ticket, it's going to be a good card. Then you've got Rungasai against Estrada with Quig with the Henny Roman. Then you've got Canelo against uh, Jacobs. Um, who else is on that card? Apart from potentially Lemieux and Ryder, who else I is don't on the card? Uh, we've got another kid on there, Alexis Espina, but uh, Golden Boy presumably put in three or four title fights on there. Okay. So he was only really given, what, one fighter for that? Got two. Two, two on there. Or three, really, Jacobs. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm always, under, I'm always under pressure to produce. Pressure, pressure main, I'm, I feel the pressure more from the public. But I know I've got a job to do for Sky and Design, but that's where I see it every day. You know, you talk about you follow these people that like I see that like I'm un I'm under pressure from the public more than the broadcasters. Well, about Golovkin, will you put Golovkin on the same card as Andre? Possibly, yeah. We'll be putting probably three or four fights on the Golovkin card. And then GGG Promotions will be the main promotion promoter for that. Promoter. Show. All right. Um, you said, can I come in and do 20 minutes? What is that? I'll tell you after. Hooker Catrell. It's 12.30. Is it? What have you got to do? What have things to do? Hooker Catrell, yeah. What's the crack? We'll be called as mandatory at some point. Will that be Hooker's next fight? No. He'll fight before. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, have you got any closing words? No, leave. don't miss the show on Saturday. Do not miss the show on Saturday. It's going to be a blinder. If you haven't got your tickets, there's only forty pounds left. The MS Bank Arena. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. It's always been the Echo Arena to me. It is now the MS Bank Arena. Press conference at the Cunyard Building, one p.m. tomorrow, Thursday. The weigh-in, one p.m. there as well. Get yourself down. Be at the show. If you're coming to the show, you will. I promise you. You will walk out of the Echo Arena. All your money back. Fair play, Hearn. That was quality. Don't boo him, kind of play. Do you see, have you seen the stuff we're doing in arena now? Throughout the night? Yeah. Build up, interviews, graphics, more screens, more interactive things. Yeah, I have. And also in America, we've mm. all, you design stuff and that, it's good. Thank you, mate. I really, Keep up. I really appreciate that. No, but like we've been doing it for like nine years. And no, but I really just... appreciate. I appreciate you. Oh, really? Yeah. Like why? No, but I just appreciate you. No, but why? What You're a great guy. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. Hey, Coogan. Amazing. Love your stuff. Oh, I love your interviews. You're such a great guy. Prick. That, that's what it is. <laughs> no. Worst videos ever. Prick. Hey, Coogan. You're amazing. Have you lost weight? Oh, how's your weight going? How do you compare my weight? Mm. No good, right. gone back the other way. No, 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 I've put on half a stone. Yeah, but you needed to, because you were going. No, no you I, wanted to, I wanted to look like that. Um, one more question. Yeah. American video dudes versus UK uh, video dudes. In what respect? Like, <clears throat> they seem like they're just very pro-America, which is fine, because they're from there, but they just, yeah. Do you not know think like, no, like, like the Joshua press conference where everyone was almost like trying to attack you and Joshua on there? Like, yeah, it's not. But that's what people want, isn't it? They want to see me like grilled. That's why whenever you do an interview, you don't. Uh, the people feel like you haven't asked me the questions. Like, oh, Coogan, you never asked me about this. Never asked me. What about haven't I asked you? Nothing. I'm just like, relax, mate. No, but what? Why are you so touchy? No, but what haven't no, I but asked I'm saying you? sometimes. No, but you put the suggestion. No, but the there, haters will say, "Oh, you gave him an easy ride." Or something like that. you haven't. You've asked me all the questions people want to know. But I'm saying, in America, they're like, "Whoa, this, that," you know. But I think we've got some but really they, good. Let's just shout it out. I think Rob Tebbett is very, very good. Echo. Yeah, I think he's a very good interviewer, and Echo I think Echo. Umar is also becoming very, very good. The good thing about Umar is. He will ask the questions, and he'll probably rub people up the wrong way. He, I can already see him seeing him clip this bit out and posting on social media. Really? See it right now. Well, let's make sure that we don't do that because um, Umar is actually a bit of a tit. And now he, he can't cut that out. And he's getting getting his P forty five. Uh, Umar's good. It's good. Who else do you write? Um, can I ask, can I tell you something? Yeah. 
I seen some really weird interviews the other day with um, Shannon Courtney. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen any of these online. I'm not no. going to start outing. I know you're talking about. Well, I just, I just, I found some, a couple of the interviews, two in particular, a little bit. Uh, Why go on to talk? Well, you've started. You to know what me. interview I'm referring to? No, I don't really. But someone mentioned something the other day in the office, but. Okay. Was well, it something where it was titled something like... Yeah, but it was referring to whether they oh, have cool. sex before fights. Right. Is that appropriate? No. I just... Listen. But that's not appropriate. But for me, it's not appropriate to ask a woman or speak to a woman like that. Absolutely. So forget women in sport and equality and all that. Like, from how I'd like to think I was raised, now I was raised, you just don't do that. Especially public, like... 100%. So, yeah, I mean... No, listen, each style to their own, and I have no problem, I'm not going to out or whatever, people have seen it, they've seen it, no problem with a person doing it, I actually speak to him and it's... But, <coughs> I watched that and I thought... I mean, that is a question that is probably put to some men, but it depends on your values. From an old school mentality, which I would probably, I'd like to think actually that I have. You just don't, you don't ask that of a woman. Hmm. But in today's world, I don't know. That might be acceptable. I, I don't know. Or, but it's like, it's, it's the whole argument which I won't get into because I'll end up getting myself in trouble. But it's like you know the whole sort of everybody's on a level playing field, men, women. So if you to ask that to a, a man. What's wrong with asking that to a woman? I mean, that on the whole. Oh, yeah, okay. You know, but oh, fair you enough. understand. But for me, no, I'm not comfortable I'm on your, with I'm on your we're way. We're old school, mate. Do you know what I mean? No, like, but I would. No, I but we are, aren't we? You know? Old school. I wouldn't say that to a woman off camera, let alone on camera. Well, you're such a gent. What about. You're such a gent. What about Edward? Kubrat. You know what I like about you, Coogan? You're what? such a gent. You know, fucking woman eyes. What? Oh, Kubrat Pulev. Yeah, I saw that one. Oh, I thought that was his girlfriend. Well. He put, did he put a statement out about that? I don't know. But that was... Uh, he must know. I don't know. I mean, again... She tweeted, didn't she, and said something about Lil, as in little, embarrassing, strange. If that was her Twitter account. I mean, if that... I saw... Who was it come out? Uh, someone came out and really criticised. Chris Lloyd, who works with us. Lloyd Lloyd. said it's disgusting. Like, to be honest, if that... Is that sexual harassment, though? If, if he doesn't know her and there is no... like. I don't know, maybe they're great friends, or maybe... If they are friends... If they've never met yeah. before, and that was like a first... No, she interviewed him at the way, right, and okay. seen a clip. But... Of her interview... Like, I would like to think that he knows her well enough, or they have enough of that kind of relationship for that to be okay. Because if they don't, then it was harassment. Would you ever do it, if you weren't what married? you? Oh, mate. Would, That's giving no, me nightmares. But would you, I don't know. Would I lean forward, grab a woman's head and kiss her on no, camera? No, but would you, no. all right, okay, would you do like the handshake? Because you love a handshake with a woman, I've seen that before. Well, that's just, it's like. Do a handshake yeah. and would you just do a one little on the left cheek? No, just, would you do that? Yeah, like, just, just respectful. Like, that's why, what you're talking about. I shake. It's, just, it's, just, it's like, you know, I don't know. It is a bit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I do that with Michelle Pelzer. Thank you. But, you know, that was weird. That was weird. But, etiquette. Uh, no, it's not etiquette, is it? That's not etiquette. That's something else. Um, anyway. Anyway. Edward, Liverpool. How long was that? 84. Oh, choking. <laughs> No, it wasn't. It was, 84 minutes. Really? Mate, do you know what time you told me to come out? 11, yeah. 11 o'clock. Oh, shit. But this is, this is actually the kind of thing that people have criticised me about in America. You know, he just sits there giving interviews, like talking about, you know, his business and his... Oh, it's not my fault. I wouldn't... I don't phone you up going, could you come in, mate? Let's do a bit. You've never... I don't think you've ever phoned me. No, why would I do that? I don't but have to if do. I You're didn't always do it, phoning me. Yeah, but if I didn't do it, then... Listen, um. I do it for many reasons. One, I like the public to know what's going on, and that's, I think, what's got us to the position where people 
like, you know, like, like us. Two, but you, tr you trust me, don't you? No, but two, no. You, you do good numbers. If you were doing 5,000, I wouldn't even pick up the phone. Joke. But no, true. But you know what I mean. But there is an element of trust there, isn't there? Be honest. Not really trust. It is trust. I'll tell you why. What about what the questions you're going to ask? <clears throat> no, not the question, because you're right. We've never, we've never ever discussed before an interview and gone, right, Ed, I am going to ask you about that and you tell me. Yeah, but that's shit. And I know you do that with other people. And I'm not saying that to make, but I'm not saying no, I'm not saying you do that. But I know that, and I'm not talking about specific individuals. I'm talking about in general, people will give interviews and they will go like this. Listen. Can we not talk about that? Fighters do I, it. I, Yeah, I know. Your I know. fighters yeah, do it. Yeah, I know, I know. I've done it. Recently. But, okay, well, I don't, know. I don't know that. Okay. Mm, you, Look, you know. Last week. But there, are, there might be personal stuff, there might be stuff you just don't want to talk about. No. It's still right, isn't it? It's a bit of you respect. Know. Yeah, it is. But I've never, and I think you'll agree, you know, sat like, down and gone, mate, can you not ask me about that? No, but do you know there's some of the stuff I've heard over the years? About what? Because you, quite, you talk quite openly on the phone, didn't you? When you're with me, right, or in a car, you don't go, hang on, Coop, let me get out of the car and you chat to whoever. You just have the conversation. Mm. You've done that, yeah? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think so. Right. But what I'm saying is, if I then went and done like, oh, industry sources tell me that Eddie Hearn is in talks with so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. You'd think, you'd pr you just heard me say that in the car, wouldn't you? Yeah. So I'm not really a journalist, am I? Because if I was a journalist, I would be trying to... No, you, listen, you've... Yeah, I do trust you because you've been in the car where I've been on the phone making major deals. Yeah. I know. There's one thing in particular I remember. I was like, literally, I was asleep and it woke up. Or you pretended. No, I think I went. And you're like... <laughs> but you're obviously sliding it. You're like... <laughs> um, no, but listen, at the end of the day, so what? What are you going to do? Tell someone. I can't be asked. I'm tired. You, you're... <laughs> All I'll say is, right, you'll never have anyone come up to you and go, oh, guess what Coogan just told me? Oh, what I respect you? that. So take, take I respect that. You will. Edward, appreciate your time as always. Roll on Liverpool. Uh, love Liverpool. It's my absolute favourite city in the country for boxing. Two. A little bit of Hilton Hotel. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>